Okay, so breaking into a tight line the easy way. So when we say breaking into a tight line, what we mean is we've got a, we've got an anchor, in this case a sling, with just figure eight straight into the anchor and the single person load on the other end of this rope. So let's say we're caving and we've got a friend of ours who's stuck down a pitch. We need to pull them back up again, that kind of thing. Um, you can do this uh, with the anchor overhead or below. It doesn't really make a lot of difference. You just need to redirect the foot loop so you can um, pull to advantage as in put, stand down into the foot loop. Pretty straightforward. So we're going to use as minimal gear as possible, carrying stuff that I would normally have on me. So tip lock roll clip, all standard stuff. Um, these two things just should live together. They should be sold together. Micro traction, as you can see, this one's uh, seen some uh, seen some life, been to some hideous places, but uh, yeah, great lightweight, super versatile bit of kit. Uh, and then a Dyneema foot loop. This is a Petzl Dyneema foot loop. Uh, other people make them also. MTDE do a really nice one. Uh, and then a little tiny. Um, I use a Rockex accessory carabiner on the end of this thing because. Um, it's actually rated to 5 kilonewtons MBS, so perfectly suitable um, for use as a foot loop. Really small, weighs virtually nothing. Um, and this way you can have your foot loop attached to your foot the entire time and clip it on and off um, as needed. Trick I picked up from the Polish guys. Uh, and a VT Prusik. Always carry a VT on me. Because you can use these things as an ascender, a descender, a Prusik, an anchor sling, a deviation sling, like all manner of stuff. Loads of, loads of good things you can do with this. Uh, and then just a basic, although I don't actually think I'm going to use it, but that's the other kind of everyday carry thing. Um, I normally take a spare oval with me as well, but and just with those few bits of gear, what you can do is, you know, is amazing really. So if we want to break into this tight line, first thing we've got to do is um, we need to make an attachment point slightly up from the knot. So I'm going to use the VT for this. You could use any sling really, and you could thread the sling through the carabiner if you're going to get worried about opening a loaded carabiner, but at the end of the day, if this has got a single person static load on it that's not bouncing around all over the place, undoing the gate and just dropping something in, it's not just going to sporadically bounce out of that carabiner. It's just not going to happen. But, you know, if for your own peace of mind, if you want to just thread it through there, you can also do that. Then we're going to need micro traction spare carabiner. So micro traction always goes on with the teeth facing away from the load. So loads up here, teeth behind. Close that thing up. Carabiner through there, and then into the anchor at the back. Do that one up. Then what you've got to do is push the button on the top, drop the cam onto the rope, set it forwards. So that thing's now under a little bit of tension. Okay, so if you see it side on, that's what we're doing. Next thing, super easy, tip lock roll clip. Tip lock goes up front like that. Roll clip blows in. Beautiful. On the other side of the rope like that. There we go. And then we want to thread our foot loop on. So the foot loop goes in behind the micro traction. You want it fully extended so you've got as much cord in front of the adjustment buckle as possible then it goes through the roll clip so you end up something looking like that so what this actually achieves is as we pull down on the foot loop you've got two units of tension going to the roll clip and then into the tip lock one then goes to the back behind the micro traction and then pulls the slack through the micro traction it does add another half a unit of tension give or take coming back in this direction so you end up with like a two and a half to one give or take you know with some friction involved but the reason i use a dyneema foot loop as opposed to a normal foot loop is that dyneema is very slippery it packs down really small has some other advantages as well but it's super slippery so if you're doing like counterbalance rescues or anything like that if you want to just for example redirect this you can just flip it through a carabiner you know and you will have some friction there but nowhere near as much as you would do um, if you were using you know a standard tape foot loop or a larger diameter corded foot loop okay so to break in then super easy just run the roll clip up and then basically pull on the foot loop once a couple of times and the load starts to come up super super easy then all we want to do is convert into a box standard three to one so take the foot loop out get rid of our foot loop for a minute and then bring our roll clip 
back down again slightly fiddly drop that in there and then we're straight into a bog standard three to one so and the further you progress with this the more throw you'll get so you can get a bigger purchase every time but th that's essentially it it really is pretty straightforward now there, there are loads of different ways that you can do this lots of different bits of gear you can do it with less gear you can do it with quite a lot less gear you can do it with more gear but at the end of the day this this method is a reasonable compromise between the amount of equipment you're using um, but the level of safety you're you're imparting like you can use a tib lock for the progress capture of the back and then just do the rest of it with with, with a couple of carabiners um, super easy but it has some disadvantages you know and, and other methods have disadvantages as well so this is this is kind of my this would be my go-to with the gear that I carry every day hope you guys like it see you again